This is literally just me telling you the things that I did to manifest my dream life while not believing necessarily in manifestation. I wanted to sit down and record a how I manifested my dream life video, but this isn't going to be like any of the other videos that you've seen before because one big difference is that while I was manifesting a lot of these things, I actually really didn't like the concept of manifestation. And I want to talk about how I manifested not only my dream relationship, but my dream apartment and success in my business, traveling overseas without actually really believing in manifestation or really intentionally trying to manifest. I want to tell you exactly what I did that upon reflection, now I realize manifested these things into my life. But throughout this whole process for such a long time, I was really turned off manifestation and to be honest, thought it was kind of cringe. This video is going to be how I manifested without intentionally or cringely manifested my dream life. So just to set the tone of the video, let's talk about specifically what I have manifested over the last year or so. So I think the biggest thing is my relationship. You know, I ended a long-term relationship at the end of 2020. And during that process, I actually got really clear on what I wanted from my next partner. I wrote down things that honestly were so specific that there was a part of me that didn't even think it was going to be a reality. But anyway, so I manifested my dream relationship down to some very, very specific details. I manifested being able to travel to Europe. I just recently got back from an incredible trip to Europe. It was amazing. And that's something that I have been manifesting a trip like that for such a long time, I manifested my dream apartment. You know, I wanted to live near the beach. I wanted to have floor to ceiling windows. I wanted it to have that kind of like beachy vibe. My apartment looks exactly what I wanted it to look like in my head. And I've manifested incredible success in my business, both financially and with my growth of my audience. So these are just some of the things that I have manifested into my life over the past, let's say a couple of years. And it's really mind blowing to me that again, as they were happening, I didn't necessarily think that I was intentionally manifesting them. But now that I reflect on what I did to get to that point, I see that there was an element of manifestation involved. The thing is, however, I have had such a rocky relationship with manifestation over the last couple of years. I got to the point where I thought the whole concept of manifestation was kind of cringe. I was actually introduced to manifestation when I was a kid. So my mom's boss, the company that she worked for, for my whole entire upbringing, her boss was very spiritual. And she used to always talk about things like what you put out there, you will receive back and really, really believed in the concept of being super specifically clear on your goals and just putting good stuff out into the world. I was introduced to a lot of spirituality from the age of like six or seven. And for a long time, I just disregarded it. But being reintroduced back to that, probably in my late teens and early twenties, I really enjoyed the concept of that you could just think about what it is that you want and call these things into your life. However, even though in sort of 2016, 2017, I was super into manifestation. I was doing all the things. I had the crystals, the cards. I was working with tarot readers. Like I really loved manifestation. And I do think at that particular point in time, I manifested a lot of things. Over the years, my belief in manifestation has started to break down a little bit. And it's largely due to the way that it's taught on the internet. So many people are now manifestation experts because it is something that is not only unregulated, but it's quite unmeasurable. I do see a lot of people who are manifestation experts who are teaching manifestation. And because there's so much conflicting information and pseudoscience when it comes to manifestation, and it feels like a lot of people are reading a book or two on manifestation, and then they all of a sudden are manifesting experts. And it's really hard to ascertain whether these people actually have skills in this particular area, because there's no necessarily like 
tangible process when it comes to manifestation. So let's say someone says that they have this manifestation process and they're teaching it to a bunch of people. There's so many variables that come into play if someone does manifest something that was the manifestation teacher, the number one influence in that process, or did it just happen? So I really got turned off specifically in the business industry when a lot of these manifestation coaches started talking about, you know, just by investing, you're going to call things into your, into your business, call financial results into your business, or just by being in this energy, you're going to succeed. And it, it's just so unquantifiable that for such a long time, I got really turned off by a lot of it. Now, I want to put a disclaimer in here. I'm not saying that these people are intentionally trying to mislead people. I'm absolutely not saying that these people are bad and I'm not saying that every manifestation coach or everyone who's teaching manifestation is doing it wrong. There are some incredible teachers out there. Some of my clients that I've worked with blow my mind at the way that they're able to get people to believe in themselves through the process of manifestation and therefore call things into their life, get clear on what they want to do the practices. I'm currently working with a coach, Natalia Benson, who is amazing, who has an element of manifestation and spiritual practices involved in the coaching she's doing to help me build my business. So I, I have regained my relationship and I do believe in it. However, there was a period of time where I just thought so many people were like, I don't know, talking shit, to be honest, a little bit. So I got turned off it. However, through this process of kind of like rejecting spirituality, rejecting manifestation for a little while there, I, again, upon reflection, have realized that unintentionally I was still manifesting things. And so what I want to do in this video today is I wanted to share with you the two-step process. Again, I'm not claiming to be a manifestation expert. This is not me trying to teach you manifestation. This is literally just me telling you the things that I did to manifest my dream life while not believing necessarily in manifestation because my hope is to prove that even when I wasn't believing it, it was in play and so therefore it must be real and even if these things are not things that you do to intentionally manifest but you just do to actually progress towards your goals then I think it was a positive outcome for all. So what specifically did I do to manifest all of these incredible things when I wasn't intentionally manifesting? There was two steps that I took upon reflection that I do believe helped me to call in the huge financial growth that I had in my business. So uh, towards the end of last year, when I was setting intentions around my business, I wanted to have $100,000 months and I was able to call that in. Like I said, I called in very specific things into my new relationship uh, about the person and about what the relationship was going to be like. I manifested my home, I manifested going to Europe and some other trips as well. I've manifested a lot of things. And what did I actually do to do this? Well, I wanna use my relationship as an example because that's the one where it was most clear cut However, all of the others did follow the same kind of trend. The first thing I did was I wrote a list. I wrote a list of what I want. I want to read out my list for my relationship because I want to show you here. So this is a list that I wrote at the beginning. I actually wrote it at the end of 2020, but I seem to have updated it at the start of 2021. And it was just called the list. It was literally just called the list. And what I wrote in this was the characteristics of the person that I would like in the next relationship. And I won't read them all because there are quite a few, but I wrote things like, he is funny, he can have good banter, he's a good listener, he's generally interested in me and my business, he makes time for me, he wants to surprise me, he loves to travel, eat good food, he rides motorbikes, he loves to work out and go on adventures, he's done healing on himself, he has an accent, He's involved in business. He loves animals. He's family orientated. He's a people person. He loves music. He wants to squeeze everything out of life. He's creative. And again, and I wrote again, he's adventurer. He loves to travel. He loves to ride bikes. He loves to go to nature. He loves to be in the ocean. I just think the combination of things like writing, again, writing down that someone in Australia rides motocross 
and also has an accent is very rare. It's very rare. A lot of people who ride motocross in Australia, they're kind of Australian. But I wrote down that list and then I kind of just forgot about it. You know what I mean? I got really specifically clear on what it is that I want and I didn't, I didn't sit there every single day like reading list, this list, hoping for the best because the next step I feel like is the most important. After I wrote this list, the second step that I did was working on feeling as though I deserved it. Getting clear by writing a list, it just makes you hyper aware of circumstances and opportunities that could lead you towards that particular thing. Or at least what it does is just put some non-negotiables or some standards in place so you're not willing to falter for the first thing that does come along. And then the second part of that is like getting aligned with it by feeling like that you believe it. You know, again, a big part of why I, for such a long time I didn't believe in manifestation was because to me it was so confusing. A lot of people were saying you have to act as if, you have to like pretend that you've already got it. And I was like, how can I trick my brain into pretending that I already have a relationship when clearly I'm going to bed alone? But it wasn't about, for me, it wasn't about like pretending that I already have it, but feeling as though that I deserved that I could get it. I worked on myself, I worked on the relationship with myself and maybe that's the thing that when people talk about raising your vibration, I got to the point where I was like, I know what I want and I believe I can have it. And I feel like those two are the biggest combination of what brought all of these manifestations into my life and now I continue to practice throughout my new and improved manifestation process. But like, I know what I want and I'm not willing to settle for anything else other than that. I'm patient in my pursuit of those things. So my brain, my brain knows what it is that it needs to look for. It knows the opportunities, the conversations, the circumstances that it needs to be attracted towards because it knows what it wants. It's clear, it's clear on what I want and what we want and what my soul wants, my body wants because I wrote it down. I wrote it down in a very simple list format. And then from there, the work that I did was, yes, I'm taking action relative to the relationship. Like I was on the dating apps. I was going on apps. I was having conversations with people. I was meeting people, but obviously my standards were there. I knew what I want. And I was, you know, siphoning through until I found it. But the work that I was really doing was on feeling like I deserved it, feeling like it was possible for me, feeling like I could actually achieve these things in my life. And so I continue to do that work, whether it comes to business, I'm continuing to feel like I deserve the upgrades that I want with my audience and with my financial position in my business, but I'm really clear on what it actually looks like because I wrote down a simple list on my phone. So again, I didn't wanna to come to this video, I didn't wanna sit down with you, my dear sweet love today, and teach you about manifestation. What I wanted to say was that if you're feeling confused, if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling frustrated by the whole concept of manifestation, you're not alone, I've been there. But like the way that I approach everything, I approach business, I approach life, I like to simplify things. I like to cut out all of the unnecessary steps. I like to find the path of least resistance. And for me, and for when I have learned from manifestation teachers that really click and make sense to me, like Lacey Phillips, just get clear on what you want and feel like you deserve it. In whatever way that looks like for you, I believe that even when you're rejecting the concept of manifestation, those two energies are still gonna be in place to get you to what you want. All right, my camera is about to die. So I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you a manifestation teacher? Do you love manifestation? Do you hate manifestation? Are you manifesting? But either way, I love you. Thank you so much for your time today. And I'll see you soon. Bye.